everyone. Welcome to today's broadcast. We're going to go over the content and examples for Unreal Engine. This is a pack um, that you can find on the Unreal Engine Marketplace for free by Epic Games. This museum-style project has a collection of maps with stands that demonstrate specific features of the Unreal Engine. Super excited to dive into this. we got a lot of good stuff that it looks like we're going to go through today. You do have to download it, but the content example project has been built to help you quickly get up to speed with different techniques in the Unreal Engine is basically the gist of it. So you just go over here to the marketplace and you can search for content examples and I'll bring it down. I'm taking this because basically it was recommended after you take the Unreal Engine 5 course, the, the base course. So I want to get started with this. You just go over to your library and once you have it downloaded, it'll work with 4.27 it looks like, not 5.0. So just make sure you have the right launcher. Um, you can choose your launchers by hitting this plus button right here. And it just goes down the list of different launchers that you can install. So we'll get started with the content examples. And uh, we'll click content examples too. I downloaded two instances of them. That's why there's two. So Unreal Engine content examples pack. Here we go for this project. And uh, I'm pretty excited about this one and what it will offer from that perspective. All right. So we are in here ready to roll with our content example. So this is the beginning of the project and you just go down to museum and you learn different aspects of the Unreal Engine. So super exciting from that perspective and uh, just looking forward to it, guys. I think I can get this off so you guys can hear if there's any sounds in here or anything like that. All right, so here we go. So we got HDMR, we got blueprints, assets, animations, a whole lot of other stuff. So we'll just start and just go down the museum. I'll read it and uh, walk around in this content example museum that Epic Games has put together to educate people to use their engine. So it's Unreal Engine 4, but this should translate mostly over to Unreal Engine 5. I'm sure they'll update the content examples pack for Unreal Engine 5 when that comes out. So let me drink a sip of my coffee and we'll get started. Constant Examples, this project is a collection of maps or levels, each one showcasing a different aspect or feature of an Engine 4. Feel free to de deconstruct or use the examples within your own project. Unreal Engine is open source, so they do like people to share this project because they the way their business model is you make they want to support you the whole way with their projects. That's why I like Unreal. Um, and they support you to get a game out or get a, video, a movie out or get something else out in 3D. So I'm really, I really like Unreal's culture. Um, who knows? Maybe someday I'll get to work for them. You never know. But um, I really like it from a YouTube video perspective and gaming perspective, what they are offering um, from a culture. I watched a few videos of them, and I'm very impressed by Unreal's culture as a company and what they offer. So we'll just go down here and go. So we have a spotlight up here. If you guys aren't familiar, you can put a spotlight by using a lighting. Um, but we'll roll down this museum. It should be a lot of fun. So opening maps or levels, to see the available selection of maps, either choose File, Open Level from the menu in the Content Browser, bottom center panel, the default editor layout. Look in the Content Maps folder. So should be right there. So these are all the different things they have here. Just look for the icons that have preview images of the level. All right, there's all our content that we could just take and start learning more about this engine. All right, so demo stands. Each level will typically show a series of demo stands. Let's bring this down so you guys can see. Each stand shows an example of the topic covered. So we got 1A, example static mesh. So this is a static mesh, basically, and we can kind of see how it's put together. They put the logo in there, the UE4 logo, and a few other things. All right, let's head over here to another one. We got another example static mesh. So meshes make up the level basically is what I'm figuring out. Um, there are the objects within the level, like you can make a city a mesh, for instance, or you can make a football a mesh. So a soccer ball, for instance. Play or simulate stands. Certain demo stands may require to play or simulate the game editor to see the example. This is done with the play button found in the about to it. So we're going to hit play and I think we're going to see something.
So the ball over here is jumping. Nice. That's cool. Let's head over to the other one. Interactive stands. Some stands have a bottom or slider you can interact with in order to make something happen. You can test these buttons and sliders by playing the editor. Not number of pixels in the row. No pixels to all the pixels. And then this one's a gear, I think. Um, trickerable gears. Cool. I like it. And this this is really good training. Like most companies do not have this type of training. So very cool stuff. Got the light bulb here. Set over here. Documentation actors throughout this project, you'll see these green question mark icons. These link you to the relevant official documentation section. So we select the green icon and click the open health document located. Oh, I didn't know that. Located in the details pane. All right. Don't see one, but maybe that's on purpose. And some more content examples. So I think I I think we hit play, right? So unless you just want to select it. This open help documentation. Okay. Using content examples for artistic applications for building your own game. The document overview is process of these examples in the most effective manner. Level layout, it will help you think each example is an interactive museum. Along with walls, reach room, you'll find a number of demo stations at each which. Numbered labels so you can easily find reference. Some examples will have multiple rooms. So basically we're just gonna go through all the example levels. I think that's the idea here and then learn about how they work with Unreal Engine. So I think it'll be a good time, honestly, um, with what we're trying to do from our content examples and just go from there on how to learn it. So we'll use our example, individual examples, and we'll cross-reference with the documentation. Okay, pretty straightforward. I do love this. I want to go read this <laughs> before I go to bed all these different things. Like this is a book that I'd highly ref reference. I've been referencing it, just like trying to learn it on my own, recommend doing that with Unreal Engine. There's a lot to learn, but it seems like it's really organized. All right, we'll get started with these content examples and just start from the top, it looks like. I really have been wanting to learn more about the animations i guess we'll just go down the list because it's not it doesn't appear to be any order necessarily so niagara is a cool system reflections post-processing so there's 97 ma museum areas so what's the streaming levels i don't think we need those yet so we'll just go back to our maps and jump into animation i've really been wanting to learn animation for a while so this is an exciting one um, to jump into from that perspective and check this out and see how it goes um, from that perspective and learning this engine because there's so much to this engine and I think it's just exciting so let's start the animation map provides several examples of on how animation can be applied to an actor through one-off or looping events, how to call an animation through a blueprint, or define behavioral type sequences through animation blueprints. Also shown are various animation asset techniques as well as skeletal retargeting. Pretty exciting stuff, guys. So let's hit play and see if there's anything here. Does not look like there is, but we got all these guys rolling down here. They're, they're all animating. They're ready to go. Um, so that's cool. So lots of stuff rolling in from the beautiful Unreal Engine. So animation using animation assets, simulate or play. We just did that. I think I had an idea that they were going to animate when I pressed play already. Oh, 
Let's head down here. We have blueprint playing with the animation, no blending. Uh, simple animation. Simple. So he's barely moving. See him, guys? Simple. Simple animation blueprint plays the animation. Okay, so this is a blueprint playing the animation, no blending. So the blueprint, hmm. I think the blueprint is the new thing, right? I don't know. Simple animation blueprint plays the animation. Let's let's get out of this real quick and just click here to see if there's something we need to know. I think the documentation was in here, right? No, it's just a floating button. So we have an animation. So let's just see what he looks like. I'm curious, like from a, so where's his animation coming from? Like animation blueprint, use the animation asset. So could we change him maybe to a different animation? Let's see, just change him to this and hit play. We can, you get him punching. Not a very good punch, but that's how you can change the animations. So I could see like where if you had a mesh and you, or someone who was doing jumping back jacks with like a sensor thing, a sensor scan, green screen, you can maybe put that animation in there if you just targeted it. Simple animation blueprint plays the animation. Let's see what this guy's. Um, Locomotion, blend space, play. See, this is what I, I don't understand necessarily. I hope they explain it better. And go backwards. This is like if you had a controller and then speed them up maybe. Wow, that's cool. I like that. That's cool. <laughs> In all honesty, probably go down here and put a green. I don't know. We'll just. This one's y'all. Is he going to y'all over? No, nope, he's looking over with his y'all. And some pitch, he's gonna raise and lower his pitch. Cool. Um, this is animation montage. Let's just play it, yeah. He's gonna do everything, maybe, a whole bunch of things. Not really seeing a lot of stuff here unless the button does something. No. I don't understand that. Let's see. It said you could select these, so let's see the proof. Open help. Animation montage or short enable wide variety of animations probably related to exposing animation controls with blueprint, visual scripting, or through code. Animation montage overview. So just an idea of what the feature does. Everything in Unreal is really descriptive and how it works and how it kind of brings you into the platform. Let's jump back here into, let's go back to play. I think we're just supposed to keep this on play. Turn off notifications for right now. So let's get the direction, let the play button again. It always resets you. So that's where the player mark is. There we go, it's moving. Y'all moving up and down. We got animation montage. The curve driven animation morph target. What's that mean? So it looks different. He's got a big nose. Curve-driven animation bone scale, simulator play. 
Oh, wow, that's cool. That's right, dude. Making a game, Jaden. So that is the curve-driven animation. And we got these robots jump-jacking. Small detail objects without collision, without foot a kai. Small decision with... That's cool. Guys aren't messing around. And this is like a Mario. This is be, this is something you make a little fl platformer with, like easily. And then we got red character playing without root motion. What it's cute. Green character stuck on the platform. So root motion. Just more of an awareness, I guess. I don't know. Uh, playable character animation blueprint. Press E to on E. I pressed E. Proceed to unpossess. Okay, well, that ain't that's not working. I don't know. Wait, I whoa. Okay, okay. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. That's cool. Let's see if he. He's roboting around. We're back at it. He's that's cool. Um, 2.2 .2, overriding animations and derived animation blueprints player simulate. So cool, I guess. Oh, we got this cool fan technique blueprint controlled anime trails. Anim trails. So that's an awesome thing. I want to see what, what doc they're doing here, though. I'm scared to restart this because it will. Uh, Jaden, I'm going to make the game. My first game is going to be pretty simple, probably be a platformer. It might also be just movies because I've been looking into Unreal movies and they're very like three minute movies, high quality, highest graphics possible, actually even looks better. But yeah, right now I'm just researching deeply. It looks like RPG is what the everybody wants. I did a little survey, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Um, I'm definitely making something big because um, I'm just throwing myself into Unreal Engine. There is so much to it, and it's 160 hours of free courses. I'm like, I'm going to learn it all. Something's going to come from it. It could be, for sure, a huge world. I'll be starting with city maps. I've done a few of those so far. So high-res city maps, kind of like what you saw with the Matrix video from Unreal. And then um, eventually characters. And then movies probably go from movies to games to something else to a combo linked animation layers okay where's so okay so he like whenever you get close he then attend huts i guess they're linking the animation and then we have standard blending i tell you what unreal has done a really good job with their training program if companies had training programs like this whew, <laughs> they should this is a top notch. Oh, you know what? I it may be possible. I've been looking into this FPS stuff. They have a lot of the assets pre-built. It's just a matter of like modifying it. Like these guys, you could easily make characters. And uh yeah, next gen is gonna be an overpowered character for sure. Totally overpowered. That's that's the whole point, actually. I'm creating a game so I can just overpower people, have a back door. <laughs> I got tired of losing in Halo. <laughs> An inertial blending. I Standard blending. Okay. And I don't see the difference. Inertial blending. What's the difference? All right. Well, cool. Oh, now the room of the Incredibles. We've met the Incredibles. Runtime retargeting. Okay. We got... This is, looks like Fortnite a little bit. It is Epic Games. Retargeted. So this is like they're they're shrinking them? Retargeted? I don't know. Cool. I like this animation though. It's slick. I I will not be making multiplayer until I have a firm grasp. I was watching an Unreal Tournament video. An Unreal did just release cross-platform chat. 
on so that's their new thing this year and then they also released multiplayer they're helping people with anti-cheat automatically unreal is so those are good signs for multiplayer but that is highly technical um i'll probably start off with something simple it is possible though if you have the support of the developer or the engine developer and it sounds like they're leaning towards to make it as easy as possible for new people to get great games that's why i'm jumping in because I watched like an hour and a half video of their thing. They're like, we're here to support new developers. And I was sold after I saw what you can make in like an hour. And I've made an hour on my other live streams. <clears throat> I'm just like, if I could make that an hour, imagine what I could do with like 20. All right, prop retargeting, hands, AK, players. Here we go. Without hands. So this is basically Fortnite characters. I am just think they're plopping them in here. Um so here's the hand on the side here, and he has the hand right there. So they have different animations for the hands when they hold those hold those right there. So that's cool. And then hands on the side here, I think. Well, just a little bit nudge that right and left. That's cool. I didn't realize even they even did that. No, it's not. Because a lot of the assets are pre-built. I'm actually just studying the whole engine right now. This is actually a course over the whole engine. Um, I, I wanted to just know everything, but no, it's not. This is the whole engine just to understand it. I really want to understand animations for video purposes because you can make good videos if you and put like a different character into the animation. You can make some sick YouTube videos with different characters. Like let's say this was Master Chief and then have him run with it. You know what I mean? Like that's really the end goal. Start with videos. But no, it's not insane. A lot it's really friendly engine all right i should do the plat i'll do the platformer tutorial um sometime and i'll show you like how easy it is to make a platformer in this engine it's like insane you're like you'll walk in an hour two hours later and have a platformer almost ready for release a retargeting plus world interaction i've been just throwing i've been i've been like non-stop studying this engine all right so we got original oh look at this hit the buttons for capture the button i guess i don't know American Ninja, American Ninja button. All right, cool, cool beans. I don't really. So world interaction animations. I, that's cool. I think we're done with this tutorial. We're aware of these now. Um, I'm not that impressed, but the world interaction animations are going to be very important if you're going to develop a game. So. Yeah, yeah. So. More movies to start off until I get a good grasp of the engine. So I'm never, I'm never not going to be producing content on the channel. I'll just get better and better as my 3D skills just increase. But the movie, there's a tutorial that's two hours over movies, over indie movies, and the guy said you can make a three minute indie movie, high quality, like next gen graphics, if you just do two hours of that tutorial. So I'm actually, I you can do a lot of stuff in this. You can pretty much do anything. All right, so we did that was the animation portion, guys. So. I think that will sum up animation here. But you can kind of see, guys, how animations work. Curve-driven animation, so you can, like, choose. I guess I could go down here and choose, like, how the animations are. What they do. But a lot of these animations are pre-built into the engine, so that makes it a lot easier. You can also grab animations from other sources or scan yourself, your animations, into it. Um... But yeah, a uh, lighting quality. This is not where we want to be. I actually want to go to Matt. I'm actually curious what the movies are. I didn't think they had any. Yeah, it's just the maps. All right, so we did the animation. We can learn about audio and how that works. Audio is pretty simple, but they did create a new thing. Or audio. I don't think there's a reason to save it. So this map shows a variety of sound actors, assets, and how you can apply them in your levels. Also include our examples of how to set up audio volumes for effects such as reverb and volume control. So basically you want like directional audio. Um, we'll click play. I don't even know how much audio can be on this level. This could be insane. 
I don't know. But what's up, Honey Badger? All right, so ambient sound actors, sound waves, and sound cues are stored within sound actors. Click the sound actor to view its details. Um, the problem is it always resets you when you sound, you click something. So you can see like, I don't even know. I just know the sounds right there. The BP trigger. So you can click like an add component. The Niagara part, all oh, the Niagara part system is probably the sickest thing I've ever seen. Um, it like has, so if you see like particles in a game moving around, it's probably the Niagara system. It's really easy too. All right, so let's let's go back over. We understand that the me, the button, the button spear, I don't even know where the sound is. Where the freaking sound, we just know the audio is up here. Okay. Well, that's cool. Some more. You can play the sound waves continuously through looping. I don't think there's a reason to really hear it right now. Oh, I wasn't on the sound. That's probably would help. So here's the loop. Um, and then you can change it to like, what do you want it to do? So it's not like, if I wanted to be footsteps, we could change it to footsteps. Really. See you, Papa Bird. So this is just some looping stuff here that we can handle. Spatialize. Play a sound from the sound actor's location. So just so spatialize is play a sound from the sound actor's location. So like if the maybe someone's talking. Um, attenuation fade a sound out and based on listener's distance from the sound actor override. When's that new PUBG game come out, Pop Bird? I don't know if you're still there. Fade and sound based on listener's distance from the sound actor override at two. What? So you're just fading in the sound. So if I walk away, there'd be less sound with its intuition. Have a sound get more or less muffled. Okay. That's left P F O one. I'm not going to remember that. Apply a filter. So basically I think you can go down here and like change the volume. Um, change the shape of the attention property, select sound actor over right attenuation. So we got a spear. Okay, so it could sound like a spear, whatever that means. Sounds like a capsule, sounds like a box. If it was a cone, maybe, I don't know, great. Um, single content, I'm not as too interested in sound because I feel like it's something that's pretty self-explanatory. There are some new sound features I'm pretty excited about in Unreal, I was looking at Unreal 5. Um, let's see. So pretty cool with 3D sounds and stuff. Over here we got using sound cues. So this would be like if you walk up. So something happens ambiently. Open the sound. We probably should see sound cues, default sound cues. So something would have to happen in order for the sound to happen looks like you can visualize the sound when you're inside the audio volume it'll apply reverb effect to all sounds select the reverb volume so reverb's a really good thing to have uh, you can use the ambient zones to separate sounds one ambient zones place to the audio volume okay cool so that's a little bit more advanced Probably won't be using that. What is all this other stuff here? All right, so we'll go back to maps. So we did animation, audio. I wanna do blueprint. Blueprint's pretty cool.
Blueprints can communicate with one another. Includes or just direct communication via casting. Use event dispatchers. Again, this guys, this is a tutorial, so if it's not the most exciting thing, I'm sorry. But I am only way I'm going to learn this is if I do it live. <clears throat> Sending data between blueprints using interfaces. The example features a button blueprint that toggles a light blueprint on and off via a custom event. Approach the button while playing to activate it. So light bulb basic. So when this gets pressed, the light bulb would come on basically. We can do that real quick. I like to look at the, oh nice. So this is the blueprints. Blueprints is a new feature of Unreal Engine. Before they had just C Sharp. I think blueprints is just preordained code within the engine to allow it to make development faster. So like you have this light bulb turn on. Um, in this example, light bulb prevents toggle on and off by connecting a battery. The light bulb is an overlap event to detect contact battery. Whoa. Cool beans. What's that called? Actor casting. Nice. And we got these light bulb blueprints are turned on off by connecting different types of batteries, each type derived from the same parent blueprint but has a different energy values. Okay. Oh, so they're make, they're not going to be as bright. They're going to be brighter as each pops on, just being the brightest. They have different energy values. That's nice. I like this blueprint idea. Like it makes it way easier. Um. This collection of light bulb blueprints are turned on and off by one button. The button blueprint finds all instances of the light bulb class and calls a toggle light. Okay, so basically, yeah, collection of light bulb. I'd be curious what that looks like from a back end perspective. This is an example of a button blueprint toggling a light bulb blueprint on and off and the event dispatcher function the button calls the event dispatcher which fires the event in the level blueprint bam cool i mean it's just a way of doing event dispatcher i'm sure it's just like a toggle button on the right here Uh, blueprint starts and stops rotating animation. In this case, the rotating blueprint binds a button's event dispatcher function to a custom event internal. Let's see what happens. Oh, it spins plus it turns on with the Unreal light. Nice. Uh, this this button will spawn a bomb blueprint when pressed. The button the button going press once until it receives dispatch event notifying of the. Okay, so let's see. What, I'm sure we're gonna see an explosion. Oh, nice. Watch out, guys. That's awesome. Is that over here? It's supposed to be like a museum, which is pretty neat. A button blueprint activates an array of different blueprints via a blueprint interface message, although each blueprint is a different class. The fact that they have employed the same blueprint interface event makes it possible to activate them all with a single function without the need to cast each class first. So this is called a basic community using a blueprint interface function. Nice. An example of a button blueprint activates an array of different blueprints via a blueprint interface message. Although each blueprint is a different class, the fact that they employ the same blueprint interface event makes it possible to activate them with a single function with the need to cast each class first. So basically, it's just how you do a pull down. This is how you've seen some of those games. Spin, whoa. 
they said you can actually use these assets in your own game. So that's cool. Pull it. Bam. So I can actually export this to my own. Right click to shoot the water. All right, so this is blueprint interface message for handling projectile collisions. Projectile blueprints call an interface function on the sphere blueprints. When they hit, each sphere responds differently to the information pass. Let's do this. Whoa. Nice. That's high tech, man. That looks sick. I didn't do that in Skyrim. And that's the end of that one. On to the next map. So we'll head over to blueprint input examples. I'm actually just gonna look at this real quick. So you got all these different blueprints here. Where does it say the blueprints though? Yeah, it's not very clear. I don't think the intention is to be clear. What is this blueprint HUD? Play and view for it to view. All right, so you got your health. Go to menu. Oh, nice. There's a HUD, my friends. I actually want to read up on this. So we'll click that. Or we won't. Open our documentation. So. You can have a health bar. Pickups. Pause menu, controller, pretty cool. All right, let's go to the blueprint input examples. I'm more doing this for awareness so I know what my options are in any given situation. Um, so just like a massive overview of the Unreal Engine. This input shows three examples of possible blueprint pawns. Each one shows you how you can capture inputs from the player and use them in different ways to drive various blueprints. Try each one of the mini games for yourself. So these are the most important things I think for a platformer. So this would be a blueprint. Series and AD for moving. Oh, that's cool. So we now we know the blueprints are pre-built. This would actually be enough for a game right here. I want to almost keep this asset. This is the blueprint input examples. This is enough to make a Mario game, literally. Nice. Oh, you can just go around the whole map, jumping through it. That's awesome. All right, so this is 2D input example of shooting. Okay, so another blueprint. I'll just walk up to it and press play, I guess. It does do that sometimes where you have to restart. This is the 2D input example of character components. No, 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 no. Oh, well. We'll hit Q to quit. This is the shooting input. So nice. So you can make a really simple game here and probably make a mobile game. In just a few minutes. Kind of looks like Legos. So that's input example of shooting. Physics driven move it, and this will be weird. All right. 
right, here we go. Get those cows. Yay. Now we go higher. That's the end of it, guys. So that's a physics driven move up space bar. Cool. So these blueprints are very powerful techniques. I'll go to the blueprint mouse inputs. This example shows how you can use a mouse input to control your game. Press play, use the mouse to interact with the level objects. All right, cool, let's do it. All right, so you're gonna just, this is like for a puzzle game, I guess. I don't really know. So I, I, I don't know the application. Puzzle, maybe. That's the mouse blueprint. Looks like that's it. Unless I'm missing something. Yeah, fairly fairly complicated concept. It looks, it looks like it. Let's do the blueprint spines. So you can use spline components with blueprints to create paths. It can be used in a number of different ways. And since on that blueprint, you'll gain access to editing splines. All right, so this shows a spline. So I guess we'll just see what it does. Um, definitely right here. I don't know why it's not working. Oh, there's... So that's what a spline does. That's the animation. Nice. Target just first start, determined by direction of the spline component, respective positions. Cool. And then this one looks like a submarine. Can be used for animating a pawn. The spline meshes in position to hand to interpolate and various other videos, such as velocity, orientation, and put values. So you can steer, swim. Let's see if it'll let us do that. Nice. And then we can move it over. Very cool. All right, so I think that's that. On to the next one. Let's render the target. This map shows examples using blueprint render to texture to implement a simple texture creator, high filled painter, and more complex GPU fluid animation. Play.
We said to use blueprints to render targets or create textures. To create a texture and right click on the render target and choose the create static texture option to create a new texture resource based on the output of the render. Okay, so static versus, I've heard of this before. Material versus static. Save a little bit extra um, to your stuff here. What is this? Use blueprints and render target to create a height map painter to use the height map painter in your crosses at the surface of the mesh and hold down the left mouse button to raise. Okay. So just like painting a height map. I feel like we've already, I've done this before. <laughs> Oh, reflection. This is how to use blueprints to render target to recreate the fluid surface actor that was found in U83. Affect the water surface. You can either hold down the left mouse button, shoot at the water surface. Okay. Nice. Pretty cool. All right. Here's the advanced blueprints. I don't even know what we're going to see here. At least some next gen stuff. This map covers some useful techniques. For using blueprints in your levels, include are some randomized examples, creation of object arrays, as well as gameplay viewers such as tracking spotlights. Let's do it. Construct scripts use a random position to specify number of meshes in a radius, okay. Construction script. Cool. Construction script is used to extend a row of mesh from the actor's pivot point to specify. So I've seen the construction strip before. Um, automatic ring. Wow. I'm just actually curious how this is done. That's cool. So, I want to see how this is done. So we're gonna to have to click on that and then go to open duck. I'm actually curious how to make a ring like this because doesn't look too easy. <laughs> So you pick just one net light thing, and then this is an example of using a timeline to create animatic static mesh component with an event track. I think it's just tracking the light, right? The script is used to make the spotlight turn to face the player when it comes within a specified range. Cool. What is that called? Actor tracking. Got the fence called a automatic wall. Customize all spotlights. So timeline animation. Event script is used to make the spotlight turn to face a player ring. That's cool. I would not have been aware of that, like if I didn't see that there. Um, button trigger is using a blueprint interface. A blueprint S used to allow button blueprint trigger an event. Let's see what it is. I think we're on it. Oh, the gears go. Using a timeline event graph to open close the door. Boom. 
child blueprints. Cool. Example of you for sharing the same collectible blueprints derived from same parent for each additional script allowing different results when collected by the player. Okay. Cool. Random recommendations, nice. Uh, pretty standard. It's really a tutorial. I'm just going through this to learn Unreal Engine. So, Blueprint overview. This map is a basic introduction to the key concepts behind Blueprint visual scripting and Unreal Engine. The examples shown here are rudimentary, but don't. So we just went through like I don't like the order they have this in. That's kind of weird. So Hello World is a classic programmer's code. If you guys don't know that. Any programmer would say hello world is their first thing they ever type in code. Using the event graph set of text on a text render component, simulator play to see hello world. So that's what they did. They did hello world. Uh, small selection of components usable in blueprints. So blueprints are just, these are the components in the blueprints, it looks like. Blueprint variables, so can be changed in the details pane. So a variable, you can change it to a different color. You can do all the other stuff. The construction script is executed once at creation of the object. Here it is used to add components in a blueprint actor. Components added in a component tab. Components added in a construction script graph. I don't. What's the difference? Is it the chat? What? Select and change variables to add and remove the components. I don't see the difference though maybe i'm blind um but yeah cool I, I don't i'm sure something was added uh blueprints event graphs so this is probably like shoot the rocket off or something for i love the blueprints in this engine because they're all are pre-made so it makes it a lot easier to like put stuff together set the rocket color for the construction script and event graph, the blueprint sets up allows you to change the material's colors. So yeah, just click on the rocket and change the colors basically. It'll be on the right hand side of the tab up there if you click it. Can't do it right now because we're in play. Um, the blueprint uses the event tick to add every tick plus, oh, that's cool. Hey, if you need a YouTube channel that just ticks forever, this is where you can have it right here. <laughs> you just video this and then tick forever. Um, that's cool. Like, just remember, like, time and this is plus one to add it. Plus one tick. <clears throat> the blueprint uses different types of flow control nodes to modify movement. Okay. I actually do want to see this one. We'll go over here. So, sprites, a coin coin movement so i see so around here you got the, like the lower things so it's sprite to coin movement and stuff like that all right cool banes on to the next one i wonder where that streaming levels thing is that like a uh, cloud i'm gonna move this up for a second just so i can figure out freak for cooking character yes I've been wanting to learn character rending for a while. Let's do this. Character rending, rendering. Here's an example of a material that can closely simulate how the human eye works. If you use this eye in your project, make sure to use both the static mesh and the material as they are dependent on one another to work correctly. Okay. That's one scary eyeball. Here's an example of hair material that uses an anthroscopic shading model to simulate the sheen. I've heard of anthroscopic filtering. It's that setting in games, if you guys have seen it. That's cool. That's it. So we did character rendering. Uh, let's do cloth. Clothes. I don't have a NVIDIA though. This map shows a selection of tips and techniques. Can you start using cloth in your game? Cloth can be authored using the Apex DC tool plugins available from NVIDIA or the Sculptomesh editor 
So that's where it would have to be, Skeletal Mesh Editor. Okay, so Envy Cloth and Wind Directional Source, that's cool. Let's pause her. Just take a look at that. So the Skeletal Mesh component is there. And it's just like moving the cloth, I guess. Go back to play. I don't like how it resets you, but that's okay. We have Envy Cloth properties imported, simulator play. Nice. So these are the settings, I guess. Cloth collision is very limited, but within a cloth that possibly use. Okay. What is that? Maybe cloth collision. I don't think we have NVIDIA cloth anyway, so it doesn't matter. Backstop. Just like another method to prevent intersection is backstop. Better for performance. This is some results of collision. So backstop, like to float on the character, I guess. Self collision. Off. On. Not what I thought was going to happen. Okay. So obviously self collision on looks way better than self collision off. Cool Unreal Engine feature. Uh, playable character with cloth. Press E. So we'll see his cloth move around, his clothes move around. There he goes with his cloth moving around. That's cool. So it is possible. I just need to take this programming code and put it in my other stuff. All right, so we'll go to decals. There's a lot of good stuff here. Um, decals enable you to pro project materials and various elements onto a surface. You can use them to add unique effects on the specific areas of a surface, which is highly useful for decoration. So, a basic decal. A decal blending. See, this is cool. Stain, emissive, translucent, normal. Mask decal. Projection on multiple meshes. Decals will not project on a static mesh with the setting receives decals turned off. So static meshes will not project. This is a multiple mesh. So you just kind of see how it projects the light and then that one's not. I don't know. Sort order. You can control which order the decals are drawn on top of each other. The sort order property. And then animated decal material. Decals may be animated within the material. Nice. Nice, nice. Let's see what that looks like. So in static mesh, we got some physics. It's ignoring collisions, I guess, so whatever that means. Let's look at those dynamic shadows we see in video games all the time. It's camera distance into a series of cascades. Each at a lower resonance, you move away from the camera. All right, here we go. Whoa. Fakes lighting with dynamic shadows based on distance, cascading shadow maps. Freaking crazy right here. How much they pay for that? All right, effects. So effects, I've got some work in. This map shows the level of some particle effects. For more examples, please use the particle. I have actually I have a particle effect pack. 
Um, this is CPCU and GPU particles. Cool. This is the CPCU. This is all the CPCU can do. What well, GPU you can do? I guess they're just showing off <laughs> the GPU capabilities. GPU velocity count model just seen in play. Alt P. All right, we'll do that. Really, just saying GPUs are better. Wow, that's cool. So this is GPU particles with velocity cone module. So the velocity cone module. There's a lot of freaking effects. Emitter initial location. Emitter. So GPU with emitter. Okay. GPU particles point gravity. Oh man, that's like a that's sick, like a black hole. Oh, I heard like oh crap sound effects. GPU particles with a collision. Look at this. Blueprint with random bursts of particles. Light sound by seeing play. Random bursts. That's scary. Guy on fire. Sparkle emission from bone. Oh, okay. So you would just turn that on, and that's what you get minus the animation. Particle shadow casting. Wow, that's cool. Just more awareness. Local vector field. That's like a star field. And you just like put a video, a comet. Global vector. Black body node, dynamic perimeter control. I think I've seen that like a mass effect. Event driven spawn. Ribbon trails. Into the world, baby. It's over, guys, right? This is it. It's over. Um, you going to the party. Lit particle reacting lights. I still go to the party. CPU per emitting lights. And then uh, beam emitter with noise module. Cool stuff. We'll jump into example project. Walk them. Collection of maps, each one, feel free to describe. So. Did we already do this? Yeah. FBX imports. I don't even know what the, this matches the results of some of the key settings for importing FBX files. FBX are primary 3D content importing path used for both static and skeletal meshes. Okay. So a static mesh imported with default settings on the right. So this is pretty standard modeling here. I really need to figure out how to, how, how to raise the resolution on these boxes. Import mesh. LODs, the asset has a cube as a base, LOD sphere, LOD one, move closer and further away to see the mesh. I don't understand. Oh, okay. I don't think that's good. I think the LOD is like, if you're on a four certain level. And one FEX support twice with different settings. It has one smoothing group and a custom vertex normals created 3ds map. I've heard of that. The one on the old graphics cards was imported using calculate normals. The one on the right was imported using import normals. So this is where you like different graphics cards could have different graphics. Maybe import normals. Um, why why not in play? So get a little further away that goes away. Is your 3ds mortals? This is a light. This is a simple skeletal mesh with three bones. Upon import, it creates two assets, the mesh asset, the skeletal mesh. Okay. That's like some crazy stuff right there. When importing animation, you need to select the skeletal asset that matches the animation. You can then drag the animation asset into a level to watch the animation play. You can also drag a different matching animation from the content browser, the assets level to preview the animation. We'll do that in a minute. I just don't want to lose our spot. 
Morph target. The mesh was important with morph targets. It's a simple. Nice. I like it. All right, so. Pause. Pause, maybe? I don't know. So here's the tube with that animation. So we know we can do maybe this animation. Hit play. It's all the way down there. I think the main thing is we know we can change the animation, but why did it morph into a dude? Is he actually doing anything? Nope. Must have chose the wrong one, whatever. We knew it was like choose another mesh. We'll go to geometry adding. Uh, geometry adding. Uh, 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 okay. So the map covers the use of BSC brushes to create simple level. I think this is a good thing to know. At Epic, we use BSP brush to rough out our levels. Then we finish prototype and we often keep the brushes as invisible collision surfaces showing only non-colliding static meshes to the player. Um, left mouse, let's hit play. So these are the surface properties. I don't really understand. Slick surface in general. Okay. Well, we know for sure it's that. I just don't know how they removed. I don't know how they removed those. Order. Oh, this is crazy. So obviously you can change the brushes. So if we add it back, we could rotate it. What does it look like tessellated? I think tessellation only works if you hit play. Ge geometry editing. Shift five. Mm. Okay. So you could click it. I don't even know. Um, example house made with geometry brushes. Okay, cool. That's well above my level. Let's paint the house, my friends. Or leave the level. <laughs> Let's go look at these landscapes. I think landscapes are really important. This map shows how you can use landscapes to create trains. You can also see how they are painting with texture and how to add features such as foliage, spline based roads. That's what I need, roads and paths. All right, this thing's barely running. Why? I don't see any roads here though. There's some roads. Spline tools, what we need. So I guess we'll just click on it. So I'd like to figure out splines. Splining. We'll have to open the dock to get the splines. Recruiting linear features that need to conform to landscape and even push pull the terrain better facilitate building streets or paths in the environment. But in general, it can be used for any mesh that must conform to, to the terrain, such as cobblestone. So this is how you make a quick racing game. Cool, I think, or gizmos. <clears throat> so 
so that's how you can create a road or a racing game pretty quickly it looks like from that perspective so we'll jump over here and try level scripting which is a little bit more advanced which has a variety of uses for blueprint scripting within your level this can be accessed from the level blueprint these examples trigger box used to open up a door triggers can be used with the level of script first examples of the trigger box okay well let's open the door Example shows a blueprint containing an event dispatch can be used for more complex and when a player overlaps a button. Coin blueprints will spawn by the level script, which contains certain just event for when the player click the spawn, its dispatch function is bound to a custom event in the level script, which can track the number of coins collected. Nice. Collect all the coins to open the door. It's freaking Sonic. This example shows a sequencer cinematic can be set up in this level script, including disabling, re enable player and controls, animating. Oh, wow. This is cool. See, this is the stuff I, I like. This is what I actually do need to know. Um, but how they do it? How they do it? Here's the sequencer. I'm just curious how they did it. So like, is it just like the camera and then? Hmm. All right, level streaming it is. This shows the process of level streaming and different ways to bring content to your levels at runtime. Oh my word. I mean the white sectional level. So persistent level, not always good, right? don't always have your level of persistence. If you're in the section of the hallway, you enter a level streaming volume. Volume associated with, the, okay. As long as you're the level streaming volume, this, this level will be loaded and visible. Every level can have multiple level streaming volumes. Okay. Streaming usage is an option for level streaming volume. Streaming levels can take a long time depending on its content. Usage lets you see how loading and visibility is handled. I don't really care about this. You guys might. I don't. Let's see. Character. We got level design workflow. Lighting. So this is just a nice little, I don't know if the idea is to read all these, but we're getting there. We're actually moving pretty fast here through this. So let's try the level design workflow. Or not save that. So you're using basic status mesh geometry primers, not pretty but playable. Okay, so prototype pass, mashing pass uses finished or close to finish assets, still simple lighting. So this is just telling you kind of like how to make the level. Lighting pass, place lights, adjust materials and then finally you'd get to your finished products which would be polishing add effects reflection blocking volumes audio and final details so this is kind of just how you make a level i don't think there's any set way to do that but 
So that gives an overview of the lights and their key properties in the engine, include our examples of light types, light mobility, shadow settings, and more. This is a point light. Probably look better if it's in play. Point light. This is a spotlight. Actually, it may look worse if it's in play because I can't see the actual light. Spotlight is literally a spotlight, and then the point lights, the light bulb. This is a directional light, the sun. Static light just sits there, some sort of dynamic. Stationary light, see the shadows. And then a movable light, oh yeah, let's move it. Quickly. Should be able to move the sun. Uh, EIS light profiles, so I guess that's cool. This is a blinking light functions. Not sure how they're doing that, but cool. Fall off exponent, less light. Exponent eight, exponential, inverse light, static object, dynamic object. So the static object, notice that doesn't have anything on it. The dynamic has red on it. And we have a source radius, static lights. It's probably dynamic. Soft shadows, hard shadows, okay. Source radius, small reflection light. I think this is important for like level design. Large reflection light. Source light equals light source. So zero, so source radius eight. I like that, that's cool. And this is where it gets advanced. Shadow bias, less artifacts in the object surface. Okay, 0.2 and then Zero, zero, okay. This is a shadow filter sharpen. Gotcha. Don't really care, but hey. Always good to have that. Let's go to advanced materials. Advanced materials setup. Examples for flexible master materials. So master material. Instance. So this is a matte preview mesh. Material instance. Um, maybe I should have this plan. Material with function, material, uh, I don't know. Um, chrome layer, aluminum layer, copper, layer blend, copper blend. That's cool. Oh, a vertex animation, nice. Radio motion player. I want to see right here, guys. All right, so a lot of good stuff so far when it comes to this and what we're seeing in Unreal Engine. So next we'll do the material experimental see what that graphic setting is so far it looks pretty cool it's the stuff we've seen so far so out so nature of temporal analyzing process feature can be exploited with materials materials will be noisy but with it they become stable this lot i understand kind of how this works but those settings in the video game so you can use a mass material 
All these materials appear to be transparent, but all of them are mass materials using the dither temporal AI material function. It's a dynamic show of this technique to reduce additional noise. Okay, so I'm never gonna remember that. Translucent, translucent stepping. Smooth fall off and trans that's cool. Translucent aluminum, I like that. Am I supposed to like are they just kinda like I don't know. Default setting, antistrophic X, see the difference, and then antistrophic XY. Wow, huge difference. Those are advanced, used to be advanced graphics card settings, not anymore. All right, on to the next one. Material instances. Examples of setting up material instances, all right. We have material, a simple material with diffuse and normal map, no setup for instance use. The same material but set up with parameters that can be changed in an instance, we also call it master material. Master material with perimeter. Instant without change perimeter child, I, I don't understand. Instance with change perimeter, metallic one, okay. I think they're taking the instance instance of an instance only to fuse perimeter modified. I just don't understand this. Every perimeter is in the default group, parent instances, parent group. Okay, that's great. Good thing. We'll never use it. Watch, we use it all the time. Description of different material inputs. Material base white. I think it's just loading with all these check textures. Base color modified to red. Material base color is grass texture. Whoa. Graphics card does not like this level. I think we'll call it good here. I think we understand materials. It'd be nice to see this level, to be honest with you, because I just kind of want to be more curious. Maybe we can go into... a lower lighting quality? It's on preview. Medium? Nope. I think that one's broken. We'll go over here to material properties. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get back in there. So let's take a look at the different material properties, just get aware of them. Blend modes, opaque, opaque, masked, translucent, additive. Let's just walk through here. No, what a freaking A. Translucent, additive. This is buggy. Subsurface, unlit, keep our head down. Volumetric directional. Surface, metallic to show reflections, nice. It's breaking our PC. One-sided, two-sided. For decal, light function. So just a lot of surfaces. I'm not gonna push too hard here. I actually wanna see some of these. Here's tessellation, breaking our computer. Cause we don't have an NVIDIA. Here's grayscale mask, I guess. Cast translucent shadow as mask, disabled, enabled. So we'll go to the math hall. We're getting closer to the end, guys.
probably won't be staying too long in the math hall. Uh, graph to use the material editor and left side. Basic trigonometry, learn basic vector map, kind of like an entire first game scripting. Make objects face the player, use vectors to measure distance, learn how to dot product between two vectors. Is this the math hall, really? Learn to use camera vector and materials, learn to generate. Okay, yep. All right. Let's go see the math. Um, these charge supply the x value math functions. All right, we'll have to hit play for that one. Math hall's breaking my math computer. Might just break my brain. Learn everything in math. Design of time makes that bouncing motion. And my idea of needing a new computer, take the absolute value of x, negative values are raised positive. Okay. Wow. All right, seriously, every formula in math is in here? This is incredible. Freaking math hall. We're getting out of here. It's a great idea. Examples for setting up morph targets. All right, cool. So we'll head over here. Be closer at morphs. Let's pause the morph settings in a way that matches the mesh. That's cool. That's well beyond what I could do. Vertex. Wow, this is cool. Let's see how he's morphing. Oh, his nose is morphing. Nice. Nav mesh. For AI navigation, play an editor to simulate. Okay. So basically, we do need to learn AI. It's moving away. Where's he going? So, my question here is, so why is, how does he know where to go? Just he knows like to jump over here. This guy, newish rebuild effort. Rebuild every move block to close the bridge. I, I don't understand. Where, where is it? Honestly, I'd probably just take someone else's AI because the AI is. I don't. This AI is kind of just jumpy. This mesh AI. It's a good start. But probably really simple AI. So that's nav mesh AI. Let's go to network features. I'm not sh Unreal Engine network features are probably some next level stuff. But we'll see. This is probably something I wouldn't implement for a while, but it's good knowledge to just know for demonstrates the use of replicates, balloon, or actors when able to allow clients to be aware of actors spawned on the server from a networking perspective. Notice the dynamic spawn actor doesn't have to replicate. Set does not even appear for a client players. So no actor. So this is like a spawn point. 
like in Call of Duty or whatever. Um, for example, a blueprint executing different logic depending on whether the blueprint is running on a network authority server or remote. So, yeah. Don't know. Um, variables that are important to gameplay should only be modified on the network authority server and then replicated to remote machines on a need to know basis. So you can't cheat, buddy. You can't cheat. The ghost health is being modified on a timer exclusively to the network authority. So they sent a ghost from the non replicated ghost to remote machines never receive updated health values and the replicated ghost to receive but you gotta receive the updates. If you don't receive the updates, it's game over. So I guess yeah, cool. Optimize desire to execute some logic. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. Function, you can function, yeah, okay. We'll learn this another time. This is fairly complicated networking. Just know you could put this all on a server and uh, read it in the manual. You can do treasure chests and lights and yeah, good stuff. Next, all right, the Niagara system. I love, this is the high tech system for Unreal Engine. I'm pretty excited about this one. Let's get in there. The Niagara system is the system that is next gen particle effects like world effects, like floating objects in the air, dust. I don't even know if it'll load. Niagara system's at 55, what happened? There we go. This is the real stuff. The Niagara system is Unreal's best feature for sure. I Niagara is the feature that you would recognize Unreal for. Next generation. VFX tool, fully programmable VX sim with node-based modular behaviors. Basically, great particle effects. Let's take a look at this Niagara system. How does Niagara work? Hit Central E to open all the examples in this hallway. Must have extensive comments to help you learn. The one is so Control E. I don't think that really is what happened, but uh, the one. So we got the node. So it's a simple system, not hard to set up, it looks like. Let's see. So these are the Niagara systems. But it's not that hard. This is just the animation. A lot of this stuff is already designed. So like, let's say play. You can see the Niagara design. DNA strand for the Niagara system. This is the simple mesh emitter, okay. I just want, I would just want the names because once you have the names, simple GPU emitter. So it's going to be a random GPU. Like the you remember the old screen savers? That's kind of what the Niagara system looks like there. I don't. It's not that hard to get into. I just pretty much you're putting particles into the game. Sprite facing. So like this, you could put an object in here. This looks like Wizard of Oz. Arbitrary vector in the case center of the system and the particle itself. So cool effects. That looks cool too. Dynamic value in this case, distance between a particle and the emitter origin to blend these attributes, such as color scale. So you can edit it and make it look a little bit better. I don't know what you'd use that for. I'm trying to just think. No, got nothing. Maybe like a, a fight animation with a whole bunch of people going to battle. I, I don't, I don't know. Spaceships. Uh, static beams are spawned using the static start endpoints rather than dynamically updating them per frame. Unlike cascade, each beam segment is a simulated particle which can further influence by forces or other effects. So it's interacting with the world. This is cool. It's science. Dynamic beams. Recalculated every time. Way to really destroy your game. Performance. One simulation can be used to drive multiple renders. This example shows one point simulation driven by a sprite mesh and ribbon render. This is multiple renderers. It's a little more advanced. A lead particle emitter is sending a location as event to other two emitters, which allows them to spawn from that location. The event is sent at the very end of the update after the particle's position of loss here is solved. That's cool. I like fireworks, man. We got an expressions. So very complicated movement here. 
snippets of HL that can be used to create micro behaviors in line in the stack without needing to create new modules. I can barely read it. Oh, we're in the fluent simulation only direct setting of variables conjunction with expression. I have no idea what that just said. But it looks cool though. Collisions, everybody knows that one. But this is more advanced collisions than what you typically see. Because it's, see, it's pretty accurate. There's a lot of, st oh, what is this thing? Static mesh sampling. Uh, static, whoa, can be sampled by particles, attributes. Why? How am I going to read it with it moving around? Sample position, UAVs, vertex color, and actor. Just know you can static mesh sample, and it looks like that. I don't know. More of these rocket things. Render overrides can be overridden by arbitrary data in the simulation. So it does react with the simulation that you have going on. This is a visible ability tag. Mesh sprite renders have an attribute called visibility tag particles. Is an integer which causes the render to only draw itself if the renderer setting renders visibility matches enter. So it'd be a one or zero. Um, yes or no situation that would bring this up. Uh, we got sound effects. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Textures can be transferred within the GPU part of systems. This demo maps a texture to a grid of particles. Texture sampling. So basically you can make this by just getting some textures. A logo. Play audio per particle. I think that's really important for like any game. Art. Users have control over volume and pitch, and the system can directly play sound waves or sound cues with multiple waves in them. Note that the current functions on CPU emitters only. For GPU emitters, look at the Niagara Advanced Hallway. That sounds just, just great. There's a blueprint stack? No, blueprint callback. Renders with no particles. Yeah, that's pretty boring. Still, it's changing colors. Mesh orientation versus rotational force. So direct set mode, can you do it? I won't read it, but you get the point. All right, so what we'll do next is we're gonna jump into the Niagara Advanced. I think we're gonna see some pretty crazy stuff. It might take a minute to load because Niagara technically is top of the line. But they're, the main thing with Niagara is, think of Niagara as like the particle systems, like little feathers floating through a world or dust. That's a Niagara system. So if you have dust throughout the world or in a certain location or little flying particles, that is Niagara. Yeah, hopefully it'll load. Niagara is no joke. I think we'll load here in a minute. All right, so to put this in the perspective, there are 1,800 shaders just loading in right now. I remember when 900 was a big deal. All right, Niagara Advanced. Um, examples of nearest neighbor queries, simulation stages, iterative constraints, mesh reproduction, exporting particle data to Blueprint, and more. I think we should just take a look at these in real time. This is more advanced. Why is there nothing here? These are experimental way to iterate over particles. So this is actually experimental. It's compiling all these shaders. The system is gonna be exploding here in a moment with all this stuff. I can go down here with those load. That's how experimental they are. It might freeze, I don't know. Uh, GPU emitters capable of sampling G buffer attributes on any screen. World norm base. So changing with the world. What is this falling from them? We'll just call it mud. This guy's on fire. Maybe he's getting shot at. Who knows? Method for accumulating multiple influences per particle. So something's hitting him. Maybe I don't know. 
Or maybe that's just his power up. Um, distance field traversal. Batman. This is high burn stuff here, so. Oh, they finally loaded. Took that long to do that. Grid 2D collision. This is because it's calculating. These are 2D meshes, so if you had a 2D level, you could use this. I don't really know enough about this, but they look cool. They look cool. Let's head down here to the other room. There's three rooms, so we're gonna probably get some high tech stuff in here. This is this is the this is the echelon level, I guess. If my computer doesn't freeze. Particle Attribute Reader is a new feature which allows one emitter to read from within the same system. The reader will work for both. I don't even know what that means, but it looks cool. Um, random leader. So they follow the leader. So like they follow your character. Whew, we're burning. We're burning. Computer is burning up. <laughs> Particle Attribute Reader can be used as... Sample another emitter spawn particles based on this sampling can be cloned onto the newly spawned particles. This works. That's cool. Like, that's just cool. So random though. That's why my computer's dying. This is example of using simulation stages to satisfy an iterative constraint such as a chain while still allowing the simulation to be affected by normal forces in the particle simulation such as winter gravity. Wow. This is pretty advanced. Color copy by cell. I don't even know what you use that for. Use them have a neighbor grid based simulation through space over time. This affects so you're just moving something and it's changing. Uh, max neighbors per cell. 5, 25, so like, I don't know what you would use that for. A sun, electrons, rainbow system, so puzzle pieces, that is killing my computer, whatever that is. This example is using grid to like the query of neighbor particles. It's literally particles. Like this is heavy stuff. All right, look at that. The computer can't even keep up. The problem is there's like 30 simulations going on in the same room. Impactor collisions are used to approach explore. Okay, position-based dynamics. Dynamic simulations always burn the GPU and CPU. Plexus, this this is beyond science, guys. This is alien stuff. I don't even know what they're doing. Wow. This is incredible. High tech. Plexus, man. I I don't think my computer's gonna make it through this. You got dynamic particle physics, structural support falling. Got it's, it's kinda like frostbite almost, but a little bit different texturing crazy what's this dude voids birds what are they supposed to flocking beaver can be modeled efficiently using spatial hash queries so cool you can make flocks of birds all right here this room's probably gonna break my computer we'll see what happens this is about as advanced as it gets component render rendering automatic players literally i think they use this in the matrix when they did that, mate, experimental render can create component and literally, literally putting things into the game. I don't even know. That's incredible. You got to export particle data to blueprints. Buy Niagara curves to sprite materials. Collisions to simulation stages. Wow. There's simulation. 
One should be different. I don't see the difference. Dynamic distance fields. Generates a distance field around a can be used to trace 3D arrays through space and for many other purposes. Nice. Wow. That was power hungry. Let's go back to paper. We're almost done here. We got a couple more levels. So paper 2D. I think we know what that is. That's like Mario. Sprites. So you can make sprites with 2Ds. It's moving so much better. Sprite editor, so you can edit the sprites and kind of create your own 2D level. 1.3 flipbooks, animated sprites, 8 frames animation. I'm sure they have that running animation just pulled back in there. Yep, the run an. Walk. So you can easily create a game just from this right here. This literally character. You could maybe just change this right out, but you have the run in. They've already put the animation in there for you. Cool. I don't. Same animation, the same. Different frame run, okay. But I guess different speed. Blueprint control, so this is like controls. The animated flipbox can be used to create animated environments. I think a 2D game would be like the easiest to make, just to get started. Flipbooks, you can use various point functions. So we got, you know, I can move them this way, that. If I press play, I'm sure it'll let us do that. Let's see. I don't know why it resets you every time. No? Well, whatever. Wait. I don't really know what... Okay, whatever. We got some 3D physics limited to a plane. Cool. And then classic pixel sprites. Nice. So you can go smooth or pixelated. So texture imported with default settings, and then you can add the texture configured for classic pixel look. That's cool. So you can actually make it look classic on purpose. I think a 2D game may be the way to go after seeing this. I'm pretty, looks like it wouldn't be terribly hard. We'll, especially if you have an auto-generated level. <laughs> wouldn't be that hard. The main thing would just be creating your character. All right, let's go over here to Parallax Occlusion Mapping. I actually think Unreal sells an auto-generated level thing for three for like 20 bucks, and then you just could literally create a ton of Android games based off auto-generated levels. All right, let's, let's do the uh, Parallax Occlusion Mapping. This used to be an advanced... I know why I'm having a lot of issues here. This used to be an advanced graphical setting back in the day on graphics cards. That's why it might get in some screen tearing. This is a very high intensity graphics pull. So when I press play, I don't even know what I'm gonna get. I just know it's gonna be intensely good graphics that I can barely run. To find our section POM, the view factor, number of steps. This is pretty, this is saying something if I can barely run this. Does that need to get close? Okay. So what am I doing? Who cares? I'll just look at them. Pyramids. I've done that. I've never. This is uh, temporary. It can be used to jitter the number of rays slightly. So just kind of ways to clean up the textures. Looks like shadows from a specified light vector. Shadows used to be manually enabled in the function. So you can kind of see how shadows work. I'm actually scared. I'm scared of that room right there. I don't. It's gonna break my computer. PDO on, PDO off. Looks like there's a shadow and there's no shadow. Um, slightly curved geo works well. Sharp peaks and corners show distortion unless high is reduced. PM works best on flat. 
when the curvature of an object is close to the height of the parallax, distortion can result. I, I may have to use Pedia because when you get into big maps, you can really mess things up. Reference plane, pretty simple. Fixing, stretching. So the stretching, I do have, I've had stretching before. Maybe is there a map of world line texture onto the resulting piano in order to hide stretching? You could also opt to project a tiling texture only onto the side faces while leaving the top face alone. I have no idea what that means. When multiple height maps are needed, try to make the color ranges as similar as possible. That would make sense. So if you import like a Google map, which you can do from Blender, you get a height map from Google map. You could literally make the Rocky Mountains. PLM is similar to bump out. Seb uses more texture lookups to calculate a more accurate intersection point. I probably won't turn that on, but you can kind of see the difference. It's cleaner. Looks a lot cleaner. PLM is more expensive. They literally said it. They literally said it was more. They literally said it was more expensive. They weren't even lying about it. They're like, yeah, this is expensive to implement your game. Like, you're going to break everything. Let's see the most advanced. What is this? POM curvature experiment. This slide showed experimental work to account for mesh curvature with POM. This experiment has not been integrated into POM function. So this is cutting edge, guys. You're looking at it. I don't even know what it is, but it's cutting edge stuff. So we have particles, we're just getting a broad view so we know everything there is to know about the main Unreal Engine. We're almost done. It's more for, it's always easier to work with something if you have a knowledge I found of something, even if it's faint, you can at least look it up. So here's a, examples of emitter types and cascade particles. Particles are gonna be very important. I've seen FX and FX is not hard to implement GPU sprite emitter, just cool stuff to look at. Mesh emitter, so I guess you could put any mesh in there. That's like cows, isn't it? To make it something else. Let's see if it lets us change that. I'm just curious. So this is the ca mesh cow, so we could do a ribbon. Well. I'm just going to click something to see what it does. doesn't look like it did anything. Oh, well. Beam emitter. Could probably change the color of that. It's a matte beam. We could go back. Why is it not changing? I don't know. Maybe it's because it's a, it's a normal level. Then we have a ribbon emitter. Pretty cool. Oh, this, this is our last guy i'm sure we could hit play and play as him let's walk through all the emitters here he is he's got like a interesting he had a nose in the last last thing all right physical animations are obviously very important Take a look at these dudes. When we press play, obviously it's gonna kick in. Now the animations are very simple. All you do is you really just select the animation you want. So it's not terribly hard to animate, but from a, I, I'd be curious, like collision effects, hitting someone, having them fly through the air, I think that'd be pretty hard to do right now. It's probably easy once you know it, but. Uh, physics animation blending. So here we go. Let's see what happens. This guy's all physics. They're just, I guess they have a lot of physics going on. A lot of weights, maybe. I don't know. 
Physics animation blending, hit reaction. This is the stuff I was... Go to deals pin and click edit physics animated hit reaction to edit the blueprint. Okay. So we have to... Details panel and click edit. We got... I mean, we could obviously do a couple animations, but how the heck to get him details panel? We're in the details panel and click edit. I, I don't understand. Maybe it's up here. Maybe I'm just not. Well, there's the editor, but we want the edits. Maybe it's lower, maybe it's lower in the tree. There it is. So, then what? <laughs> I don't know, it's in here. It doesn't really tell you exactly how to edit, does it? It just stops. I'm not impressed. Uh, constraint profiles, change constraint profiles. Okay. Physics animation component play. It's gonna restart us, sorry. Um, physics animation components, physical animation set on every bone below. Physical animation set on every bone below spine. A little bit different, I guess. This next maybe more, I don't know. Every bone below. I don't see a difference. And maybe this will. So you can kind of see how he like he's tired it versus not. I don't know. Yeah. That's different. What is wrong with that dude? He's like dancing. Physical animation kin kinematic roots. Okay. I mean, it's a pretty drastic pull. So this is probably like if your player gets hit, you just drop him. All right, we'll continue on to physics class. This is a full overview of the content of everything in Unreal. Now this was recommended by the Unreal 5 team, Unreal 5. What is up with all these people putting links in my chats from different countries? I'll have to hide that user too. All right. Examples of various physics properties. We'll head over here. And just click play, I guess, unless we can figure out how to simulate it easily. I actually really, simulate physics is clicked, okay. So whenever it's clicked, I guess obviously it's gonna do that. It'll move around. This is simulate skeletal mesh, rigid body, simulate physics. So it's rigid. Then you need to click the simulate physics button. That's all he did. All right, so we'll hit the play button so we can look at these. That was just dropped down. That already dropped down. This is a radial force impulse. Whoa. That's a crazy racket. Thruster. Uh, constraint force actors used to display movement constraints would be by fall, not by move itself. Physics constraints. 
I don't think it moves. Physics constraints, angular motors. Cool. They move by themselves. And then we have the physics constraints, linear motors. Doesn't appear to be moving. Driven by velocity. Okay, so you hit it. Driven by position. Let's see. It just shoots back. Okay. So those are kind of the linear motors. And then physics constraints, breakable. It's going to break. Maybe. I just kick it. Boom. Did it. All right. Physics has been looked at. Different options in the physics. How objects will react. What we'll do is go to Pivot Painter, and then we'll have Pivot Painter 2 and Post Processing, Procedural Mesh, Reflection, Skin Rendering, Static Meshes, UMG, and Volumes. Pivot Painter is probably more along the lines of how can you paint the room in Unreal. They're processed ahead of time per Object Painter section of the script, so let's just see what kind of what it looks like. In this Bob Ross moment, scale the elements. Let's hit play and see what they look like. This room's gonna break my computer. So they're scaling. Oh, it's literally breaking my computer. I, I don't think I can even walk in this room. Who the freak puts 30 freaking million animations in one room like this? I'm out. I'm done with Pivot Painter. We'll do that some other time. Now we're going to go to post-processing, which is obviously the end of the, when you're done. Normally you see these in movies, right? They post-process stuff. So let's see what your options are. Sphere reflection. So you, you would like change and choose different options. This is a post-processing default setting. Ah, this is going to kill me, this room. Oh, I like that film grain. Did you guys see that? That's cool. And then we have, oh, scene color. Dang. Got bloom. We all have seen that before, right? You felt that bloom. Put ambient cube map. I don't know this one. Did you guys, uh, it changes a little bit. Oh, geez. Auto exposure is going to be bright. You know it. Just like lens flares, so bright. Lens flares. Uh, ambient inclusion, pretty standard lighting technique. Uh, screen space reflection. These are like options in games I've seen in the past. I've not seen screen place reflection, so they must not use it a lot. Global illumination, I have seen that in games. Post-processing motion blur. Whoa. Can't read that. Screen percentage, play to see effect. I, I'm too much, too much. Blend of, oh man, we're in blend world here. These are advanced graphical techniques, priorities. Just goes blue, I guess, or whatever color. Blend radius and weight, crazy. And then unbound, I don't even know. All right, so this is kind of your post-processing, cool stuff. We're almost done here, we're on the back end. Procedural mesh is very important. In fact, I think that's probably the most important thing. And skin rendering is important. Static meshes is important for sure, because you, you can import an entire city through a static mesh, like Chicago, for instance. You could use a Google map put a static mesh into your game. That's probably what they did with the Matrix Revolutions. They probably static meshed it, then they updated all the textures. All right, let's do the procedural mesh. Or whatever the new Matrix thing was. Various features of the procedural mesh component. And again, I don't know how they did it. So if anyone from Unreal ever says that that's how they did it, I don't know how they did it. That's a, just a guess. Mesh construction. Procedural meshes may be constructed by explicitly passing data directly to their procedural mesh component. 
All right, I guess I want to see these. So this is a procedural mesh. It's movable. It can be damaged. But I have to hit play to freaking see it. So let's see what we got here. The procedural mesh construction. Assume counterclockwise. I don't even know. Right? Yeah, okay. Edit the blueprint in order to observe its construction. Okay. Uh, we have the generate box mesh. Okay, this can be used as a foundation for other mesh producing, so a box mesh. And then we have a static mesh copy, and then obviously the procedural mesh is going to be more complicated. You can duplicate an existing static mesh component, so that's cool. More CPCU intensive, obviously, if you're using dynamic. Then mesh slicing. This is something I want to see. Procedural mesh components can be sliced using a plane. The slice function can create caps for the areas and even slice the collision. So this is like if you, this could be like for auto, like let's say, I would say, whoa, that's insane. You know what? You know those YouTube videos that have like that 3D art where they're just like slicing stuff? They go viral. Could probably do that with this. All right, let's let's jump over to with this animation for any object, literally any object you put in there. Um, so let's see if we could change the object. I'm just curious because this is actually really popular on YouTube right now. I was wondering how they did it. This is exactly how they did it. So if you want a million sub YouTube channel, just slice stuff like that. Just go. All right. Put an apple there. Really popular on YouTube. I have no idea, but those videos go viral. All right, so let's do the reflections. Examples showing different techniques to create those reflections that this room is going to break my computer to once I turn it on. These are metallic. It'd be good just to know what the reflections are. Let's see how they work. Um, so it looks like here's the reflection element right here, and you can just kind of change the different type of reflections it looks like. So that's pretty straightforward of how to actually get that to work. So, oh, I like that. That looks cool. You got the roughness, 0 0.3, just kind of like telling you what how intense it can be. So zero is the, obviously the most. Non-metallic. Box reflection. Spear reflection. Screen space reflections, dynamic so, so you can kind of see how it's Reflecting off the mirror and back with those objects with the screen space reflection with the dynamic, which is very uh, GPU intensive. Screen scene capture cube. I, I don't think it's reflecting, so it's capturing. Scene capture 2D. Okay, there we are. That is that. So skin rendering would also be really important, especially when we get to the meta humans. And I wanted to talk about meta humans because it is a big feature of Unreal Engine 5, which is Unreal Engine 4, but this will translate to the new Unreal Engine, which is going to change how um, characters are rendered basically through to make them more realistic, like PS5, Xbox Series X graphics through the meta humans that Unreal has created. That's going to change a lot. So this may be outdated, but we'll just... It still may apply to the meta humans. I don't know that they're rendering in the new Unreal Engine after this. Because I think it's even better than this. So, But this is still good to know. Build realistically, humans going to must for any modern video game engine. To fulfill this need, Unreal Engine 4 now offers shading methods specifically for skin or wax-like surfaces called subsurface profile. So let's see what that actually looks like. Properties, squirrel flat wall, example skin and subsurface profile is this one right here, and this is what it looks like. 
So I'm sure when I hit play, it's gonna look like more like people, no? Human skin, simple jade skin. So the jade, see how that's shiny? The jade and then simple marble. So I have seen these, but that actually does look kind of a lot better. And then we have, what is this? The dynamic lighting skin. Have you seen how surface profiles react under different light conditions? So I don't know if subsurface profiles are still used anymore with meta humans um, in the new one. So I don't know if that, they're probably using a more advanced technique, but it's good to know subsurface profiles, just to know it exists. Okay. What in the freak is these people linking? You guys stink. Like I'm removing, I'm hiding you all. If you link this channel, you're gone. Especially those type of links are probably not safe. Let's look up static meshes. Static meshes are probably the most important part of any 3D engine. Because you can you can import static meshes from other applications. Like if you want to import Spider-Man, you can import Spider-Man. If someone had made a 3D Spider-Man, you could put it into the Unreal Engine that way. Static meshes are by far the most important first thing of a 3D engine. So let's go, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So obviously it's a mesh, it's a 3D object. FBX files, that's good to know, I didn't know that. So this is a static mesh, they brought it in and then we could also choose some other static meshes if we were really wanting to. I don't know what I just did, but you can always hit Control Z to undo something. I'm sure it looks fine once you hit play. I, but I want to mess with these meshes. Mobility, um, baked lighting and shadows cannot be moved when playing. Dynamic lighting and shadows. So it's obviously in these options. Block all dynamic lighting options down here to cast a shadow, rendering. So that's where your options are. I just think that's, you can go down here and take a look at the options. But that's really where it's at with the object lighting and stuff. So we'll go ahead and hit play and take a look at these. So this is cool. Dynamic lighting and shadows can move when playing. Um, no or UV mapping. Proper UV mapping uses channel zero. I'm not much about the UV, but I guess it's just how the light hits the object. So that's kind of cool, right? Got the light map UVs, no or broken UV mapping, worst case, that's probably what I'd get. Bad UV map, that's maybe what I'd get someday. And then we have the good UV mapping that the pro did at Epic Games, who made Fortnite. And then we have generate unique UVs, created with third party program, cool. And of course, Unreal Engine's gonna create the best UVs, auto-generated UVs in Unreal Engine. And then we have the auto generated UV by Unreal Engine. <laughs> so we know where that's favoring. Um, we got the material elements. Material element. Nice. Material elements. So different stuff on there. We got the collisions. 24 DOP. So let's see what those collisions look like. I think... Since I'm already in this point, there's no point because I'm going to have to restart the level if I do that. So I want to see everything. Sockets. Seriously. We have vertex colors. Mesh point tool. That's really important. Probably the mesh point tool, mesh paint tool is very important because you can update those vertices. Mesh point tool textures, so you can update the paint. And then finally, we have the LED. This is the level of detail. Now, I was listening to this guy, and he created 3D movies with using the Unreal Engine. And he's a he works for he works for Epic Games. He said this is really important when creating a movie, for instance. And man, let's put this perspective: Star Wars: The Mandalorian was made off the Unreal Engine. So that's just how big of an engine it is, but. LED level of detail is really important. You said put the object in the back with less detail so it doesn't hit your performance when you're rendering. So 
just some tips there. Less detail in the pack is obvious, and then more detail as objects are closer, and you kind of mess with that. All right. We're now going to go to UMG. And I do want to kind of see if LOD is an option at the bottom here. So you can kind of see all the options here. You could turn on everything. Now, if you turn on everything, you will be hit with performance hits. So just be smart about how you're turning on settings. I don't really know much about UMG. I have heard of it, but I don't know a lot of it. Okay, the UN, the game and I. This is something I definitely is more complicated. But if you can master in-game UIs, it's gonna look slick. All right, so how do you, let's see what, so you can slayer, you can put these titles in here. Let's take a look at the UI. Of, I was hoping to just like, take the UIs that are already created and just throw them in. Because UIs can be a pain. Okay, we got the red, green, so you can change the colors through sliders. Hover button. Yeah, that's annoying. Input boxes. So you put the data in kind of like a computer program. So I guess we could type pizza and uh, sure, zero, I want one pizza. I want one apple, pizza one apple. That's a simple program, but Put your character name in. So you can like change the way people progress in the game. Decrease the health, increase the health. Um, just throws a menu item in the air. Wow. Classic screensaver. So this is taken from a scene capture actor. Anchor at, anchor left. Blocking users left and right. What I'll do is I'll send in no links in my next, there'll be no links anymore to protect users because we're getting attacked by link people. All right, so we're going to go to volumes. We're going to go to the last thing, the volumes, and take a look at it. I'm not too interested in the menus right now. I don't think you guys are either. After we do that, we should be good to go. We have completed the entire thing here. So examples of different volume brushes. So you got your placement. So like switch mode to place shift one, drop and drag any form of volume. Got uh, invisible collision, blocking volume. Cool, we'll just freaking play it, whatever. Visible collision, makes sense. GDC distance calling. So a couple of different settings in here for sure. Um, light mass, so you can click it. Can I raise it, lower it? What's under here? The freak? It's like a secret, secret map or something. Cold distance. Don't care. 
Don't care. Could be cool. Yeah, override. Physics volume. Actors that simulate pixels are acting inside it. So, basically, you're just capturing people and are capturing characters. A pain causing event. That's what they call it these days. Okay, we have completed the entire content pack. Um, tomorrow, I want to dig into some more. Uh, I want to dig into Unreal Engine 5 meta. I think that's going to be big in the future. And uh, it's basically character creation Unreal Engine 5. I think we may do some of that tomorrow, depending on where we're at. But that concludes this live stream of the entire, yes, the entire course pack. Um, so we'll go over to Unreal and I'll show you exactly how to get to the content examples. Um, yeah, we got toasted here, but we're going to head over to Epic. And um, if you want to take this course, you can go to Content Examples in the Unreal Engine. You just go to your library um, and you can search for Content Examples in the Marketplace. I'll show you guys how. You do need to make sure you got 4.27 installed, or I think that's the one, but you can. it's pretty easy to do that. And then we'll go to content examples if you ever want to try this course out. Right here, this was recommended after taking Unreal Engine 5 course content. Content examples. So they have tons of courses like this you can just go on and take a look at. I'd highly recommend you also take a look at the training. I did get some recommended courses from Epic. So real-time rendering, fundamentals was one for basics, first hour of UMG, which is the, uh, the, the thing we just saw for the menus. And then some other ones were really good. Becoming an environment artist is another course you can take within the Unreal Learning System. And then how to become an indie film developer and stuff like that. So that's that's kind of where we're at here. Lots of great content. Um, for you guys who don't know, you do need to go to Unreal.com, Unreal website and go to their training portion to actually get those courses. This is just a project that was leaded off those courses to be recommended to go check out. The great thing about Unreal is they let you use all their assets. It's an open source platform. They have a very good business model after looking into it. And they don't really charge you anything until you make over a million dollars on your game or whatever. So chances of you doing that are pretty low anyway. So if, unless you hit the lottery, Unreal is really not going to get that much money from you, even if you made a game for them after looking. But um, there's a lot of great stuff. You can submit content. Um, you can do a lot of stuff with Epic Games. I'm just so impressed with what they do with their community. It's very a community. Here's the here's the guide. If you really want to dig deep, you can dig deep. It tells you exactly how Unreal Engine works. So just a ton of content, but there will be more as we end up creating a game over time here. Mainly, it'll probably be movies at first, but we'll jump into gaming once we get a firmer grasp of the assets in Unreal Engine. I'll see you guys ever hit that like and subscribe button to Next Gen Video Game Theory, and see you guys on the flip side.